How do you clean a linen closet? And how often should you clean a linen closet? Great questions. We're going to talk about it today. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. Now, today's show is brought to us by House Call Pro, which is the number one service software for service professionals. And as a small business owner, you need help keeping track of all the details of every job. So if you are upselling, you need to know at what point on your calendar those upsells pop up and it needs to be queued in so that you can bill your customers in advance and have the money waiting for you and have them on your schedule and have the person dispatched for that job. So check it out at housecallpro.com forward slash Angela and they'll walk you on a demo to see if it's right for you. All right, on to today's show. There's a woman that called in and wanted to know how often should we clean our linen closets and how do you do it? All right, so today I'm going to show you three linen closets and we're going to go on a tour. We're going to clean out these linen closets. Now, I will share with you this. Linen closets are a great upsell. There are lots of small tasks inside a person's home that we upsell, which we charge more money for. It's on a special schedule and it is not part of a regular maintenance clean. It is not part of a deep clean, okay? It's not part of either one of those. And so we never go inside this closet except on an upsell. There are lots of little projects like that around a house and it's a way for a house cleaning company to generate more money. Now, my first recommendation for cleaning out lin linen closets is that you book them on the walkthrough. So if you're on the walkthrough with the customer and you pass a linen closet, is this a bedroom? No, that's a linen closet. Oh, great, let me mention, and you just mentioned, that a couple of times a year, I have cancellations. And so on a cancellation, if you like, I can put you on a wait list because we clean out linen closets on a random basis whenever we get a cancellation and I have a window I can't resell. Are you interested? And a lot of people are like, well, yeah, but you don't want inside my linen closet because we haven't opened it in five years. We just chuff stuff in there and kind of like hope the door closes, right? So you're going to take everything out and that's a special project. It requires special time and special pricing. You might even need special tools or special chemicals in order to clean out what's in there, okay? So it's a special project. So today I'm gonna to take you on a tour. We're gonna to go through three linen closets and I'm gonna show you exactly what the process is. I'm first gonna tell you this. I'm gonna pull everything out and we're gonna sort it in categories. I'm gonna take a quick picture of every category. I'm gonna contact the homeowner because they're going to be gone while I'm doing this process. And I'm gonna do a quick text do you want this pile saved? Do you not want this pile saved? What do you want me to do with this stuff? Because there are decisions in there where some of this stuff has to go back in and some of it has to be tossed. So on the walkthrough, it might be possible that they say, oh, I'm really interested. Can we do that soon? If they say that, you're gonna do the walkthrough for the closet right then. So you're gonna open the closet door and say, tell me briefly about this closet. And then they will say, well, you know, my daughter went off to school and it's been five years since she lived here and we just took all of her shampoos and soaps and everything and chunked them in the closet. Okay, so the stuff that's been in there is five or six years old. It's probably not good anymore. It's probably a no longer stable product. So with their permission right now, did you want to save this or do you want that to go? And they might say, no, get rid of all the shampoos and lotions and potions and all that stuff. Just get rid of that. But I do want to keep I know that one of the closets that I'll be showing you today has some air filters in them. They're the air filters that go in the vents. And so that's where they store them. They just don't have a better place for them. And when we're done cleaning the closet, all of those will go back inside. That's perfectly fine. We just have to understand what the scope of the project is. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be figuring out what those shelves are used for. Is there anything in there that we can get rid of? And if not, we're going to fold everything up and organize it after we clean the inside of it and we vacuum it out, make sure there are no mice droppings or any of that stuff inside the closets. Okay, so let's go on a little tour and I'll show you three linen closets and how to clean them. This is inside a bathroom that is off the side of the daughter's bedroom and the daughter is now off to college. All right, so we're looking at, looks like toilet paper and paper towel storage. It's fine if they uh, keep those here, I guess. We have some... Um, garbage bags or grocery bags or something there. We have other stuff that looks like medicine, lotions, Vaseline, um, light bulbs, towels, cloths, um, stuff. I'm not sure what this is down here. It looks like a container of, I don't know, shampoo, cleaners, something. We'll figure it out. 
And then these are the vent uh, replacements that she mentioned, the air filter replacements. And so she wants those to stay in the closet. And we know that the light bulbs also stay in this closet. So when we're done, we will have organized this and created a more useful space, honoring still the, the supply storage area that it has become. Now, as I get close to this linen closet, we're gonna take a look at what's inside. We have a whole bunch of what looks like cleaning cloths and towels and um, I'm gonna say mismatched cloths. And we have some magic erasers and we have a bunch of cleaning supplies and we have some what could be hair supplies. We have stuff down there, toilet paper and other cleaning supplies. This is in a hallway outside of a bedroom and it is a linen closet, I'm guessing, because that was a good place to put the linens. Um, as I look inside, the lighting is bad here, but um, I have some towels at the top that look like um, bath towels, and I have what looks like bedding. I have a couple of boxes here. I'm not sure what that is. And we have some towels, and then it looks like more bedding, and then it looks like more bedding and more towels. So, and a, an umbrella and some candy. All right, so I'm gonna just start emptying stuff out and I'm gonna spread it on the floor and around here just so that I have a place to work. I'm going to start out, these are grocery bags. So we'll keep those all contained right there. And I'm not gonna take out the uh, all the toilet paper at the top because that's all that's up there is toilet paper and paper towels but there are two shelves of paper towels. So I'm gonna move all of the paper, paper towels from the bottom shelf up to the top shelf so that there's room for the rest of the toilet paper. As we empty the closet, we're gonna use the one touch method where you touch everything only one time, if at all possible, and then put them in stacks accordingly, whether it's trash or whether it needs to be saved and then make it easy for yourself so we're not picking up and putting stuff down multiple times. All right, so our top shelf has our toilet paper and our paper towel rolls, and that goes all the way to the very back. So I'm, I did not move all the stuff out of the top, I just organized it. On this shelf, it's empty. The next shelf is empty. The third shelf is empty, and the bottom of the floor is empty. This is a very small, confined space. I'm gonna put my shoe in here so that you can get a grasp of how big this space is. It's not very big at all. And so what I'm going to do is clean those baseboards, clean the floor. I'm going to scrub out the grout with my grout brush and I'll clean the whole thing with a paper towel. I'm not even going to get a mop for this. Moving over here, we have some stuff that I'm guessing has to go back. I have a sink full of garbage there. I have the grocery bags. I have some personal items of those personal items. I think the only thing I would keep probably is the Vaseline. There is a bottle of perfume there. I don't know what the shelf life on that is, but we'll, we, we'll ask about that as well. I have some unopened bottles of mouthwash and I don't know what the shelf life on that is. I'll have to check, but those are three or four other things that I would toss. I don't think they're any good. And I have some cleaning, su suspect cleaning supplies that I'm gonna recommend they also toss because I'm not sure what's in there and I don't believe that's the original contents. I have a toilet brush and a pumice stone. So I'm going to take a quick picture of these and find out exactly what needs to be done with those. All right, so you're right down here in the corner of this closet with me. And I'm just going over this with a paper towel. And I've just scrubbed the floor. And I'm just going to wipe this out. It doesn't need to be a big process. See how gunky that is? I noticed that these are actually burned out light bulbs, so we're gonna throw these away. I'm going to save that, but there's a pumice stone in here. I'm gonna put that up here for now. I'm going to get rid of both of these. I don't think that's what's really inside there. These, um, I look at the date and I see that these are actually new. So I'm gonna hang on to these. She could have bought these just in the last couple weeks, I guess. So we'll put those back. Um, she says if anything has been unopened, she'll take a look at the dates later. So these two have been unopened and I'm just wiping them down so that they don't have dust on them. We'll put those back. Um, it's pretty much empty. We'll throw that away. All right, so here's our finished closet. I have the toilet paper and paper towels at the top. 
On the second shelf, I have the grocery bags and the box of whatever she had here. Down below, I have just an empty shelf with nothing on it. And on our next shelf, I have the unopened bottles of mouthwash and her cleaning supplies, which she did in fact want to keep inside this bathroom. I saw some in the other bathroom, I was trying to put them all together, but she wanted them all here. And at the bottom, I have the uh, vent filters that go there. So that is our closet number one, and the customer will be so happy to see that there's just extra space available and that now they can put whatever they want inside that closet. What we got rid of is, this is my garbage pile below here. We have to the right, a whole bunch of bottles of old things. This is the stuff that was inside the sink. This is a broken scale that she said is 20 years old. It's okay to throw out. And then the bottles that we emptied. And so of all the things that we're keeping that don't go back in there, it's gonna be this little stack of whatever this is. They look like designer soaps, a thing of perfume that may or not may not be any good, and a couple of containers of, I don't know, peanut cups or something for a party. So we'll give those back to the homeowner. Otherwise, this is uh, the stuff that I'm going to go get rid of right now. I'll throw those out in the family dumpster. And then this closet will be done and we will move on to the next closet. Yay! All right, I'm on to closet number two. And as I look at these bottles, that looks really old. It's, I don't know, stained or whatever. This, this has been here for a very long time. I don't know that this is any good. I'm going to try to consolidate uh, the stuff that's good, and I'm going to just ask for permission that I can get rid of this. All right, so I just pulled these out, and I see on one of these containers it says pest control. And so it is inside a container that does not match the contents that are inside. So now I don't trust any of those containers. I don't know what's inside any of those. And they all look really old. They all look like they've been... I don't know, left or mixed or used or whatever. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask permission to dump all of those. All right, so for the top, we still have some towels. We have the cleaning towels. We have other types of towels and hand towels. We have narrowed it down to the cleaning chemicals that are good. Uh, she said the mother no longer is using the jerry curl stuff, so we got rid of all of that. Down here in the bottom, we do have some hair and junk and garbage. So like the other bathroom, it's very small. I'll put my shoe in there so that we can see how big that is. It's a very small, you know, one and a half tile area. So I'm going to wipe that out with a paper towel and then we'll go ahead and we'll put everything back. All right, so our second closet ended up being the top shelf just towels. The second shelf was just towels. The third shelf was towels and cloths and then some toilet paper. And then below that we had all of our cleaning supplies and more cleaning supplies that we were able to get up off the floor so that with this shelf here, those will be able to breathe. I feel better about that. And then down here on the floor, we just have our grocery sacks in a container so that those can be reused. And so at a glance, that is the next closet. I'm really happy about the way that that turned out. And so we will move on to closet number three. All right, so our last closet here it turns out that it's a camping closet. So we were close when we thought it was an Airbnb closet, but the way that it ended up are towels on the top along with linens, those are bed sheets and pillowcases. On the next section, we have mismatched bedding. Those are air mattresses that have never been used along with a couple of towels. We have more towels and linens on the next shelf. And then very uh, below on the bottom, we have some used air mattresses that are still in good shape. And then the machines, that I was thinking was a hairdryer was actually not an umbrella or a hairdryer, but the machines to blow up the air mattresses. So that is our project. It is completely finished. The things that we ended up taking out were onesies. The instructions were to throw the onesies away if there was a pillowcase that had no matches or a towel that had no matches. And then over here, we have some mismatched hand towels that can be used for camping that will then just go in the washing machine. Alrighty, and that is the process of cleaning linen closets. And my recommendation is that you do them at least one time and maybe two times a year in order to maintain them. The first time it's gonna be the hardest, after that it's gonna be a lesser maintenance clean, okay? So the first time it might take you a little bit longer, the second time it's gonna take you maybe half the time. So my recommendation is that you do it twice a year and put that on the schedule on an ongoing basis. All right, if you found this helpful, 
Uh, give us a thumbs up. Let us know how we did or leave comments in the notes below. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it.